Can you turn it up? Clap your hands, everybody, and everybody. Clap your hands to the people in the back. Clap your hands, everybody up front. Clap your hands, y'all. Now I'm Clay Globe. I bet you didn't know I bust these type of flows. Just throw your hands in the air and wave it like you just don't care. And if you like the sound that we're putting down, somebody say, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Now everybody scream. So tonight we're talking about saving New York City spaces. The coalition is basically you and, and me and, and Jamie and all of us who believe that grassroots cultural spaces are important in this city. Small cultural spaces, no matter what our, I don't know, musical taste, uh, sexual orientation, skin color, income. Yeah, so who here likes hip hop? <laughs> who likes punk rock, bebop, mambo, <laughs> disco, new wave, salsa, house music? These are all cultural traditions that were born in New York City in spaces just like this. These are the places where we came from and where the kids, all ages, it was like a mutation of disco. But it happened in these small places that you guys want to say. Places like the Executive Playhouse and the Evolo and the, the Dojo and uh, Club 371, oh my God, the Disco Fever, you know, the Renaissance Ballroom, the Harlem World. All of these places are now gone and they're not open anymore. And our kids are suffering by it because we had a way out. Hip hop saved my life. And you're gonna save lives of a lot of young people in the future. Anything you need from hip hop, all the legends, uh, we got your back, all right? Night or day, the criminalization of people of color spaces is unacceptable. How will the night major help people have their fun? Yes, that's the stigmatized nightlife, while at the same time, not encourage cultural erasure. This office, the biggest question and the biggest charge that I think should be explored is how do we reinvest in home, how do we reinvest in a culture and a community that continues to give and give back to the city, give back to the people that participate in that community? And I hope that the nightlife, the night mayor in this position really prioritizes a similar ethical tenant and that does not become, as many of us have said, with fear, a pawn for developers and wealthier constituents to do what they've continued to do, which is business as usual, which is killing us. Being a DIY space operator has always meant being terrified to ask for permission and then being consumed with anxiety while asking for forgiveness. It is a consistent scramble from resources and plowing through insurmountable roadblocks. We're completely unstoppable and think of what will happen if we're thrown resources instead of roadblocks. If this is about safety, teach us how to be safe. If it is about zoning and noise, then help us talk to our neighbors and the various administrations. For too long, DIY has been a marketing device for developers and realtors. I, for one, am tired of selling condos. We are the ordinary people, the spaces that do the most with the least and who devote our collective energies towards bringing value to our communities. Why can't the Office of Nightlife address the affordability crisis for small arts organizations directly through grants and subsidies with merit and diversity in mind? A ill side effect of gentrification besides being forced into nomadic community as independent artists, due to escalated rents and excessive regulations in some regard, nightlife has become so segregated in class, race, and age. People come to New York for this mythic culture and the erasure of those cultures. What are they gonna come here for? No one's gonna go to a city to see the beautiful condos. It kinda doesn't matter. Forgive me for being frank, but I'll just get right to it. Um, the Hospitality Alliance has by far been the biggest opponent we face in the fight to repeal the cabaret law. If you think dancing should be illegal, we find you very much to be an enemy of nightlife. It's like hiring a librarian who wants to ban books. Unlike majority of you, actually, my background is engineering. We want to create a safe space, areas for people that they can express themselves. We want to be safe. And unfortunately, CD, the way they treat us is like a gotcha game and constantly coming after us. We want to have a good uh, communication with FDNY, NYPD, and anybody, any city agency. We feel like the definitions, how we can be a good citizen and create safe space for everybody is not clear. Thank you. The Alps. <laughs> 
people have asked me, oh, are those clubs still there in the Bronx? And I said, actually, they went out around 1985 because a kid from the neighborhood no longer was running things. I, I'm, I was so sorry to see so many great clubs that I've loved thrive and disappear. So let's not let that happen. Thank you. I'm extremely proud of everyone that's here. And when we speak about diversity and growing as a coalition, that we actually are opening up the tent and actually looking to as many corners and spaces as possible to make sure that we get our message across and that we help everyone. And that's just the power that these spaces have, bringing people together, making people feel that they're part of a community. How are we going to ensure affordability in housing for artists, making sure that the city understands how artists' lives work. 20% of small venues in the city have closed in the last 15 years. And that's really what we want to counteract. So we're going to be looking at innovative policies. I just want to thank the artists. <laughs>